The Holy Gospel according to Mark, 10th chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me! Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me! Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up. He's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. While in my second semester of seminary, and this was April, picture this, April 2013. I wrote a sermon based on the semester-long exegesis that I did on this very gospel text. I lived and breathed Mark 10, 46 through 52 for an entire semester. Theoretically, for the assignment for gospels class, everything I had gleaned from every type of study on Mark 10, 46 through 52 was to influence the writing of this sermon. It was to teach us all how to examine the scriptures. I passed the class. I tried to find out how I did with the individual writing. I couldn't find it. I don't think I won any academic awards. And I have written better sermons. I was just a rookie back then and hadn't really started preaching just yet. This was April of 2013. As I pulled this work out of the computer files this week, dusted it off, and read it aloud once again for the first time. This is the first time I've encountered this writing since that time. I could hear the lens of what I was experiencing at that moment in my formation, all the questions I had. As I was seeking to write from the lens, though, of Bartimaeus, Bart, the blind man. Now, it's been nine years since I wrote this sermon. I finished out three more years of seminary, which in regular years is about 10 or 11 years. I almost have finished five years of parish ministry. That's a lifetime, right? I got married since then. I had a heart episode since then. I, like you, have walked through a global pandemic since then. As I read this original piece, not changing one word, and as I read it today, not changing one word, based upon a second semester seminary lens of Bart's lens, I want you to listen. I want you to listen for the layers of lenses. Bart's lens. The Gospel writer's lens. The first and second century church lens. My lens in 2013. And my lens now. Your lens in this time. The lens of a member of our community who is out on the sidewalk and not part of the St. Matthew family. The lens of one who will read 
our upcoming welcome statement. Listen closely to this article that Bartimaeus is writing for a fictitious church's newsletter. Amazing Grace at Jericho by Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. Editor, Robin Farrell. Bartimaeus of Jericho recalls his days along the roadside as a blind beggar and his chance encounter with Jesus Christ. I share my story today with you concerning my days as a blind beggar outside the city limits in Jericho, in the land of Judea. I share with you what was the beginning days of my call story and how Jesus Christ touched me and changed my life. As you may know, blind people can hear, smell, taste, and feel sharper than those who can see. As I lived in my world along the Jericho Highway, outside the city limits, I could sense the hustle and bustle of Jericho, both past and present. On days that the Roman soldiers moved about on the roads leading to their outposts outside the city, I could feel the rumble of horses and wagons on the earth, the power of the Roman army vibrated through the valley floor and up into my chest while experiencing the present reality of this world-dominating army I could not help but think of how the earth must have moved some 1500 years earlier as Joshua and his army of Israelites took the city of Jericho and made those walls crumble Israel became victorious that day on that first battle in the new land. How sad it was to see this new empire dominate the promised land. I often thought, where was Joshua now? Where was God now? I listened to the travelers as they passed by. <laughs> You'd be surprised at what people talk about as they're walking on the open road when they think they are without audience. I purposely sat at a distance from the highway for protection from the violent and so as not to be a nuisance to any. Travelers who do not, travelers who did not know I was sitting by the wayside would speak freely of city politics, of the Roman oppression and of the news from Jerusalem and beyond. Dominating the news on the road was talk of Jesus of Nazareth, the prophet who had aroused the Pharisees with his controversial healings and teachings. It seems that Jesus had torn down some social and ceremonial walls along the way. Even though Jericho had lost its historical wall centuries ago, there was still a wall between the city folk and me. I was unsightly. I was not to be touched. And I was of little worth in this society. My parents had sinned and caused my calamity. There were those compassionate souls who would seek me out on an occasional basis and would throw provisions onto my cloak. Most often it would be two women, sometimes a lone person. Occasionally I would recognize the familiar clang of armor of a couple of soldiers who would stop by to help me out. Whoever my angel from God was at the moment. They never touched me. I was unclean. They would get close enough to me to speak as they dropped their gifts onto my cloak, but I never felt the touch of another human being as long as I lived my life on the cold earth. One thing I noted, the compassionate would come most often alone, and never in a group. If these same people were in a group, 
They would pretend not to know me. I knew my role. They knew theirs. The scuttle along the roadway was that Jesus of Nazareth dared, dared, to touch the unclean. He touched a leper and allowed a hemorrhaging woman to touch him. Demons were screaming at the sight of Jesus, begging for his mercy. The biggest fuss from the Pharisees came from Jesus eating with tax collectors. Jesus was touching the marginalized in society and inviting them to come out of their shadows and follow him. Truly, this man was the son of David and had the power to heal and to lead others up out of their despair. This man was a Messiah. Perhaps this was the Messiah come to free Israel. For the first time in my life, I wondered what it would be like to be healed. The thought had never crossed my mind. It wasn't an option. This was my lot in life. This was my world. All my earthly possessions were wrapped up in my cloak. My cloak and the ground that I had spread it over were my chunk of this world. It was mine. My blindness and took my cloak. He defined me. Would I really want to be healed? How could I ever function in a world where I was equal with others? Would I really want to be lifted up out of my despair, which had been my life and my routine? How did these recently healed people handle the change in status? Huh. Apparently the leper and the demon possessed were able to change their status easier than the rich young ruler. Rumor had it that he was not willing to give up his riches to follow Christ. And giving things up. I wondered who the son of David was. I wondered what he had given up to make this trek around Judea. The day before Jesus of Nazareth, the son of David, came to Jericho, on his surprise visit, the traffic on the road had increased. Families were headed to Jerusalem for the Passover. I was familiar with this annual parade of pilgrims. This was a tradition that I was not to take part in each year. The events of that next morning, though, changed my life. I had just gotten situated in my usual spot when I heard a commotion coming out of the city. All I can tell you is that they passed by and I was on full alert. I listened to Jesus as he talked with a crowd of followers. I listened as the crowd reacted to him. There was something familiar about Jesus. You know that feeling when you meet someone and you know in your mind that you've met them before, but you can't place it. I felt he was so familiar to me that eerily I felt he was me. He was Bart. I felt I had been created in his image and his voice it was like thunder, yet so serene, as if he had just spoken, let there be light and peace be still, all at once. I smelled the scent 
of the waters of the Red Sea, reminiscent of how the salvation that Israel enjoyed given by God from the pursuit of the Egyptian army, I could take and see that God was good. This was no ordinary man. This was God. What had the son of David given up for his journey? He had given his life to be the humble servant of all. He had given his life to break down the walls between God and humankind. Jesus touched people right where they were. And he was just feet away from me now. No way was I going to screw this one up. When the crowd walked by, I screamed out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd made up of individual people that I knew turned against me as I suspected and told me to be quiet. Apparently they were in a hurry to get to Jerusalem. I screamed out again, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. This was my opportunity of a lifetime. I needed to get Jesus' attention. Over time, I had learned how to effectively get the right person's attention. This one really counted. Jesus stopped. And he told the crowd to get up, to get me up out of my place. My entire life flashed before my eyes as I stood in my place. I saw the scene unfolding in front of me as I dreamed. I threw my cloak, which had been shielding me from the overnight chill, the cloak which had been guarding my possessions, the cloak which was mine and had defined the words echoed in my mind, the words that I had heard Jesus spoke. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Deny myself. Get up out of my place. The only home I have ever known. The place where the passers-by, my only family, knew where to find me. As I leaped forward toward the Messiah, I heard his voice again. What do you want me to do for you? I said, Rabbi, I want to see you again. I spoke the words to him face to face. As the words flowed out of my mouth, I realized that I was seeing Jesus face to face. This was no dream. He told me my faith had healed me. Then he told me to go. Go? What was I to do? I followed, I followed the crowd along the way to Jerusalem. Perhaps my future call was to follow Christ in ministering to those along the wayside. Perhaps my future call was to those who had come by the wayside, showing them what Christ had done for me. The visible part was pretty self-explanatory. The inward healing needed explaining. What it was that I had given up following Christ. What it was that Christ had given up making this happen.